After the first flight of Sukhoi 27 in 1977, the United States identified the need for next generation fighter to counter the threats of Sukhoi 27 flanker and under development fighter aircraft McCoy and MIG 29. At that time, Sukhoi 27 was the direct competitor of United States fourth generation fighter jets like F 15 Eagle and F 14 Tomcat. In 1981, this culminates into advanced tactical fighter program by the United States Air Force. Here, we would like to tell you that the Advanced Tactical Fighter Program, or ATF, was a demonstration and validation program undertaken by the United States Air Force to develop a next generation air superiority fighter to counter emerging worldwide threats, including Soviets. In 1981, US Air Force began forming requirements for a new air superiority fighter intended to replace the capability of the F 15 Eagle. In June 1981, a request for information for the Advanced Tactical Fighter was published by the Air Force. After publishing, many defense contractors showed the interest. In the initial stage, the main requirements were super cruise, stealth technology and short takeoff and landing. But, later fly-by-wire flight control systems, higher power propulsion systems, and advanced alloys were included. In September 1983, study contracts were given to seven airframe manufacturers for further definition of their designs. By the end of 1984, program requirements had settled on a fighter with a maximum takeoff weight of 50,000 pounds, a mission radius of 800 miles, super cruise speed of Mach 1.4 to 1.5, and the ability to use a 2,000 feet runway. In the same year, Pratt and Whitney and General Electric, under the program joined advanced fighter engine, received the contract for the production of prototype engines. In 1985, a request for proposal for the fighter aircraft was issued. Two contractors, Lockheed and Northrop were selected in October 1986 to undertake a 50-month validation phase, culminating in the flight test of two technology demonstrator prototypes, the YF-22 and the YF-23. During development, both contractor teams conducted performance and cost trade studies and presented them to United States Air Force. Studies done by both the contractors enabled Air Force to change the ATF program requirements. Many changes were made after math. The thrust reversers were removed, ejector seat standards downgraded, side looking radars deleted, infrared search and track, or IRST, system was downgraded from requirement to goal. In 1990, Northrop comes with General Electric YF-23 and Lockheed comes with Pratt and Whitney YF-22. The first YF-23 made its maiden flight on the 27th of August 1990, and the first YF-22 first flew on the 29th of September 1990. The first YF-22 with Pratt and Whitney engines supercruised at Mach 1.43 on the 18th of September 1990, and the second YF-23 with General Electric engines reached Mach 1.6 on the 29th of November 1990. After following a review of the flight test results and proposals, the Air Force announced the Lockheed YF-22 with Pratt and Whitney engines as the competition winner on April 23, 1991. The Lockheed team was awarded the contract to develop and build the advanced tactical fighter in August 1991. The YF-22 was later modified to F-22 Raptor. Later Lockheed and Boeing jointly manufactured F-22, and on the 7th of September 1997, F-22 made its first flight. F-22 was on display at the National Museum of the United States Air Force. During the ceremony, the F-22 was officially named as Raptor, and on the 15th of December 2005 it was entered to the service for the nation. No doubt, F-22 is a masterpiece of technology and innovation, and that is why USA never exported F-22 even to its close allies. As per reports, the F-22 was never designed to be exported. As a fifth generation stealth aircraft, the F-22 packs some incredible technologies in a highly maneuverable supersonic platform. But it is also a very strange aircraft in certain regards. Despite being the best in its role, the Pentagon decided to buy only 186 aircraft out of the intended 750.
But, how could an aircraft, that is so good at its job, get shut down so quickly into production? As the Pentagon was pouring trillions into the global war on terror, the F-22's S superiority and stealth attributes went wasted against an enemy that could hardly dress its troops in the same uniform. But while utility attracts money, current threats determine utility. And in that regard, the F-22 Raptor must be one of the unluckiest aircraft of all time because, despite its phenomenal capabilities, it came into service at a time when there was no enemy for it to fight, despite the nation having no shortage of enemies. As per recent interaction with General Charles Q. Brown Jr., aviation experts are anticipating that F-22 will eventually retire from the inventory by 2030. The US Air Force wants to retire the F-22 in beginning around 2030 mainly due to two reasons. First is the F-22's high operating costs, and second one is F-22's obsolescence in a number of areas. In terms of obsolescence, the F-22's biggest issues are its limited range, its outdated core avionics and its stealth design. The F-22 entered service at a time when the US military was fighting a two-front war with seemingly no end against an irregular enemy in Afghanistan and Iraq. However, by 2006, the United States' defense priorities had shifted away from deterring near peers and toward the ongoing global war on terror. America's combat operations had little need for air superiority fighters let alone stealth. So the F-22 was unceremoniously cancelled after just 186 airframes were delivered, with a vast majority of its production infrastructure reallocated toward Lockheed's next stealth fighter, the air-to-ground-oriented F-35. 